Good evening, America, and good afternoon, Australia. You're back listening to Radio Tony, and this is the Everyday Business Show, and we have an amazing guest for you today, and I'll tell you about her just shortly. For those listening live online on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitch, we have the wonderful Payo from the Philippines waiting to answer your questions, comments, and send you links from our talk today. Just a reminder, you can find out all about our guests on RadioTony.com. If you miss any of the links today or if you're driving whilst listening to this show, jump onto RadioTony.com for all the links. A reminder too that you can see the replays of all of these shows once they're uploaded to Binge TV across the US and on the Tony TV app available on all LG, Roku and Smart Sung, sorry, Samsung smart TVs across the world. Now, our guest this evening is the delightful Dr. Sophia Yen from Panda Health. So guys, we're going to have a very female-centered conversation today. So if you're not into that, please switch off because this is the gal show. Now, Dr. Sophie is CEO and founder of Panda Health Birth Control and Delivery. Panda Health is the only doctor-founded, led, female-founded and led birth control company. Dr. Sophia graduated from MIT, UCSF Medical School and UC Berkeley's PH, pardon me, MPH program. She has 20 plus years in medicine, clinical, she's a clinical associate professor at Sanford Medical School and her passion is women's reproductive health and she has co-founded three non-profit projects to improve the lives of women. The Silver Ribbon Campaign to the Trust Women, SheHeroes.com and the TripleFL.co, a female-founded, female-led B2C awareness campaign. Uh, she is been, has been educating about cutting-edge, evidence-based medicine and has spoken at TEDx Berkeley, TEDx Silicon Valley Women, colleges and academic institutions from Sanford Medical School to UCLA Internal Medicine. Panda Health was founded by Dr. Sophia Yen, Perla Nye and Elliot Blant with the intention of making women's lives easier. She's on a mission to make sure women never run out of birth control on their watch. Women have better things to do with their time than run to the pharmacy or sit in a doctor's office to obtain a prescription for birth control. They believe that women deserve panda peace of mind. I love that, Dr. Sophia. Panda peace of mind, knowing that their birth control is taken care of so you can focus on everything else that comes up in your busy lives. No more hashtag pill anxiety, the fear of running out of medications or having to run to the pharmacy each month. You have better things to do. Get out there, enjoy life, and let panda health do the worrying. Good evening, Dr. Sophie. Thank you so much for coming on Radio Tony today. We're so happy to have you here. I thought I'd start our conversation today with a welcome, and then we want to talk a little bit about you. Thank you so much for having me today. And just one clarification, it's uh, Pandia yeah. Health, and Pandia is oh. the Greek goddess of healing, light, full moon. And we also, to help you better remember the name, um, came up with the definition, pan is every, dia is day. So as in the Spanish word for day. Every day. And we got you covered every day. Oh, fantastic. So I wanted to know, um, growing up, did you always want to be a doctor? So this is my nursing brain, uh, knowing and having talked to hundreds of doctors over the course of my lifetime. Some of them, it was something that they always wanted to do from a young age. For others, it was more about a certain event that happened that caused them to think about medicine as um, a life choice and career. And for others, it was kind of almost a haphazard approach. So tell me about growing up and how, what made that decision to be a doctor for you? 
Yes, I was um, born in the heart of the winter. My mom was a nurse <laughs> and my father was a PhD student. And my mom yes. always said, don't be a nurse, be a doctor, because the nurses do all the scut work and the doctors get all the credit. And so I was like, OK. And then as an yep. Asian American growing up, your choices are doctor, mm -hmm. engineer or accountant. I don't know what the third one was. And I like yes. science and I like people. Yes. And so medicine mm -hmm. seemed to be the coming together of that, whereas science would have been PhD on the bench going for the Nobel Prize or something like that. But I yes. um, have always been fascinated by the human body, the way it functions, and every person it is has fascinating. a different story, right? And mm -hmm. each patient, yeah. you can help them, you can make people's lives better. So I've wanted to be a physician since fourth grade, and I kind of used the physician excuse to get free stickers. So I would be like, I need three sheets of every sticker because I'm going to give this someday to my patients. I can't just have one sheet because if somebody <laughs> takes it, all the patients will be sad. And so that's how I scammed my parents into giving me three times as much stickers as everyone else. And I happened to encounter that sticker book. Unfortunately, I didn't give the stickers to the patients, but I have a really good <laughs> collection of stickers from the 1980s. Fantastic. Dr. Sophia, did you feel, I know in talking to a lot of Asian women, that some of them um, distinctly feel pressure to perform or pressure to achieve at a high level. Did you feel that over the course of your lifetime? Is, and is that something that, that drove you forward? I think that I was lucky in that my parents instilled yeah. in me that you can do anything you work hard towards. So one is yeah. it just doesn't come easily. It's the growth mindset that you yeah. can learn anything, yeah. but you got to work for it, you know, and you got to work hard for it. And I think the two qualities yeah. as an adolescent medicine specialist to any parent of a teenager that you can do for particularly a female is one, tell her she's gorgeous and put that in her head and anybody yes. who tells her differently yeah. is wrong. And two, any yeah. young person, you can do whatever you want as long as you work hard towards. And I know sometimes that doesn't mm -hmm. come true because life is mean or evil or the consequences, but- <laughs> If, you know, if you're in the United States and you were lucky to get a good education and, you know, equal opportunity, et cetera, there is the American dream. And my parents have been yeah. blessed to accomplish that. And I have been lucky to be born their child and followed in their footsteps. So I wouldn't say it was ever the pressure from them. It was just lots of happy, yes. positive pressure feelings. from you and, and realizing also Wonderful. as a, 13 year olds that um, my grades reflect me. They don't reflect my parents. And that's kind of yes. the like talk yeah. I give to teenagers is that end of the day, you know, you get bad grades, you suffer. I get good grades. It shows yes. the world how amazing I am. And then I can get into a good college, get a good job and live a great life. Yes. And so it is really having that yeah. young person yeah. realize it's you, you know, and the same kind of thing with health. When I have a young person mm -hmm. and they're not taking care of themselves, mm -hmm. end of the day, I go home. I don't mm -hmm. have diabetes. I don't have any disease. I'm not pregnant. But if you don't take care yes. of yourself, you have diabetes. You're the one that gets pregnant. I walk home free. Your mom and dad walk yeah. home free and they care. But end of the day, it's on you. So it's really yeah. about realizing one, the power that you work hard, you can get there and that, you know, and that, that it reflects you, not your parents. Yeah. Um, Dr. Sophia, I think some of the things that I've seen change across healthcare is that it used to be the doctor's fault or something else's fault. We're seeing a shift into people individually acknowledging that health is actually your responsibility. You have the power to make the changes in your life that see you have good or bad health. And it's about you educating yourself. It's about you finding a good doctor or the right doctor. And it's about access to information and education that will help you live your best life, which is, sits 
at the um, core of what Pandia does is about making sure that women have wonderful lives. Um, I'm wondering if that the decision to do and focus on women's health, was that influenced in any way, Dr. Sophia? I've always had a passion for women's health, women's reproductive rights. And it started when I was yes. 15 as a pre-med volunteering at Planned Parenthood doing pregnancy test counseling. And I ran a pregnancy oh, test. Awesome. And it wasn't my awesome. pregnancy test, thank goodness. It was someone else's. But unfortunately, yeah. the test yeah. came back positive. And I knew that this was mm -hmm. going to be a game changer for her life for the rest of her life and how different our futures yeah. were going to be. I would go on to MIT, yeah. UCSF, Stanford professor. She would start the beginning of this cycle of teenage pregnancy. And certainly she could go my route too, but yes. it would take a lot of help. And had she only had comprehensive sex ed and access to birth control and the confidence yes. within her to know that you don't have to have sex if you don't want to, and that becoming a baby yes. mama isn't necessarily the best future for you. If she'd been given all that, she could have had a different future. And so to me, unplanned yeah. pregnancy destroys people and it's so Absolutely. preventable with education and access. And so that's why I was like, oh, I'm going to be an ob guy, or should I be something else? Yes. And I came across yeah. adolescent medicine, which saved me from doing surgery and delivering babies, but also <laughs> catching young people when they're starting their habits yeah. and giving them good yeah. information on confidence on you can have sex, but don't get pregnant and don't catch diseases. And that there are many, yeah. many different types of birth control, you know, 40 different birth control pills. If one of them doesn't work, there's yeah. 39 other ones. There's, another. there's patch, ring, IUD, implant, shot, so many different options that if you use one of those plus condoms, you really, really shouldn't get pregnant. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I thought I might touch on one of the more controversial world. I, I don't, it, from my perspective, it's not controversial, but the whole discussion around unplanned pregnancy and the notion that someone else uh, should make that decision about you and your body in terms of whether you, that pregnancy continues or not. Um, We've seen lots of advances for women, but there's still many people who are fanatically against women having that say over their body and whether a pregnancy um, is pursued or not. What have you learnt in your decades working in this arena? I'm sure you've probably got some pretty tough stories around that. Are you happy to share with us, Dr. Sophia? Yes. That's why I started the silver ribbon campaign to trust women. The idea is you see the red ribbon and you know that supports HIV, LGBTQ rights. And why can't those of us who have a uterus and that supports bodily autonomy and the right to self-determination wear a silver ribbon Absolutely. that says, I yeah. trust women. This is a personal health decision that should be made between a woman with the advice of her medical person, the advice of her religious director. And that's it, isn't it? Yes. That's it. That's all that needs to be in that conversation. Exactly. It's no one else's body. It's no one else's decision. It's theirs alone. And I think we need to step out of that and we need to make it clear going forward in humanity that that is the decision between the woman and a doctor. That's it. Yes. It's my uterus, my choice, your uterus, your choice, no uterus, yeah. not part of this discussion. No choice. <laughs> I agree with you, Sophia. I, I, I don't know how we still have that thought pattern that exists across the world where we have very vocal minority men saying abortion is wrong or evil or whatever it's not their decision to make yes. um and i just i love the work that you do in that space and empowering young people to say this is your choice this is no one else's choice you that other person is not going to have to raise that baby that other person is not going to have to school clothe feed and look after that baby not their decision 
Um, and I, I cannot believe that we're in the 2020s and still having these conversations about women's reproductive rights and their uterus. And the um, U.S. Do you Supreme find Court that, is looking yes. at a case right now. It's going to, they're mm -hmm. going to look at it. And I believe the argument is going to come out in the spring that may reverse Roe v. Wade, <laughs> which would result in it becoming immediately no. illegal in 11 of the United States states. And mm -hmm. then there's another nine states that are very hostile that might have other laws that might, you know, be either left over from before Roe v. Wade or that are like triggered. I have wow. to, you know, look at the Center for Re Reproductive Rights. So the United States is absolutely going backwards. And I just want to put out yes. for, you know, people the United States was founded on freedom of religion. We were running away so that yep. we could practice whatever religion we have. And that is a key Correct. tenant of being an American. Freedom yes. of, you know, the, the ability to pursue happiness. And if I have to carry yes. the fetus of my rapist, that is not happiness. If not me fair. and my but family are not ready to have a baby and we used a condom or whatever, we should be yes. able to decide when and how many, but the freedom of religion yes. part is key because even within yes. the same religion, there's Catholics for choice. And a fundamental yes. tenet of Catholicism is it's between you and your God. And if this baby Absolutely. is going to burst your Absolutely. uterus and then you can't have other babies, then it's okay to terminate the pregnancy. So you can have a future baby or yes. whatever. But again, don't yes. impose your religion on me and I won't impose my religion on you. And that is a fundamental American value. Absolutely. Absolutely. I thought that um, I thought that I've been watching that um, a case and I actually thought that it had uh, the decision was not going to go the way that you thought. But if it does, that really takes America back centuries. And it takes women's rights back centuries. It takes second choice class back citizens. centuries. It's just, absolutely. We become second class and citizens. What, what people don't realise is that young women who are in a desperately horrible point in their life are then more likely to make terrible decisions about their health because they have a country that by law doesn't support what they need to happen. I think it's incredibly sad. I'm so glad that you're so um, vocal, Dr. Sophie, in this arena um, and that you're working towards educating particularly teenagers about um, their reproductive rights and how to prevent pregnancy. I want to touch on the next subject, which is about uh, periods being optional. Again, guys, if this is tough for you, you should be listening. But if you're not, just switch off. Let's talk about periods being optional. Yes. So my latest um, educational campaign, and I think my gift to this mm -hmm. world, is if we can educate yes. anybody with a uterus that if you're bleeding one week out of four, you can make hashtag periods optional. So if you go to pandiahealth.com yes. forward slash periods optional at the bottom is my TEDx talk on the science and safety yes. of fewer or no periods. And I'll give you the scientific quickie on it, which is in the yes, old please. days. It's a great TEDx talk. I was just going to say for those listeners, jump on to that link and go on. That TEDx talk is particularly good, but go on, Dr. Sophie. Yes. So the quick summary is in the old days, we would have 100 periods in our lives. And now we're having oh 350 to 400, three and a half times, four and a half, four times what is normal. And so really? it's unnatural, the number of periods that we are having. And what would be more natural is fewer periods. And the reason why is we used to have eight or nine babies. Thank goodness we're not. Yes. Now we're having two. Thank goodness. Yes. Yeah. We used to breastfeed for 18 months, which we should do, but it's very hard to do, those of us who have tried. It and is. You it know, is hard to do. Yeah. And on average, in the United States at least, we do zero, three, or six months. And so we used to yes. be incessantly pregnant or breastfeeding, yes. and now we are uh -huh. incessantly bleeding. 
And so every yes. single time you build that lining of the uterus, you risk endometrial cancer. Every time you pop out an egg, mm. you risk ovarian cancer. And then somehow colorectal mm. cancer is also related to this whole process. Into the, yes, it is. I think it's because yes. we don't talk about these things, but 30% of those of we us don't. with uteri, um, when we get our period, have some sort of gastrointestinal thing, diarrhea or constipation. Absolutely. And so, Absolutely. Yes. And, yeah. And so if we switch off this up and down, up and down, up and down, growing of the lining and shedding and growing and shedding that we really don't need to yes. do unless we're trying to mm -hmm. get pregnant. So I had that realization mm -hmm. is you don't need to build that lining of the uterus, wait for an embryo and be like, oh, no embryo and then bleed and then build and bleed, build and bleed yes. every month from age 12 to 50 unless you're trying to yeah. make a baby that month. So if you're trying to make a baby that month, yes, you need to build so that it can catch the embryo and have a lot of blood. It'll grow and, it's and got be a happy. safe space to grow. Mm -hmm. But if you're not trying, and most of us are not, you know, until the average age of 26 mm. in the United States or 35, for those of us who had to get through more school or took a while to find yes. our significant <laughs> other, yes. that is yeah. so many years of build and bleed, build and bleed, build and bleed. Yes. And we are risking cancer. We are risking the number one cause of anemia in a menstruating woman is menstruation. Yes. And the number one yeah. cause of missed school and work under the age of 25 throughout the world yeah. is horrific yeah. menstrual cramps. So anybody yeah. who's missing yeah. work in school, even if your mother had, had it, your aunt had it, your grandmother had it, it runs in the family. Don't you, put up with it. Yes. You do not need to suffer. Please go see a physician or a health person. And then just so you know, the first line treatment is ibuprofen, 600 milligrams with food, assuming you don't have any kidney problems, up to three yes. times yes. a day, up to five days a row. And that will decrease the muscle cramping and blood loss by 30%. Mm -hmm. So failing that, mm -hmm. then we got to talk hormonal treatment, but knowing that yeah. if you're on the pill, the patch, the ring, we can make hashtag mm -hmm. periods optional, but you can also do it with the IUD, the implant or the awesome. shot. So many options. And just for the, just for the wonderful women listening, this does not harm you. The stopping or making optional of periods does not harm you unless, of course, you're trying to have a baby, correct? Correct. There is a slight increased risk of breast cancer, but it is offset by the decreased yeah. risk in ovarian, endometrial, and colorectal cancer. So anytime I meet somebody wow. who has ovarian cancer, I'm like, were you on the birth control pill? Because if you've been on the birth control pill, patch or ring or IUD or implant, but more of the birth control pill, patch or ring, for at least yes. five years, that decreases mm -hmm. your risk of ovarian cancer by 50%. There is no other yeah. way to decrease your risk of ovarian cancer other than turn off yeah. the egg popping every single month for yeah. five years. Yes, yes. And the, the other thing to note is um, you're more often to pick up the early signs of breast cancer than you are the early signs of ovarian cancer. Although ovarian cancer is kind of silent and sneaky, isn't it? Absolutely. You don't know until it comes. We really need more funding yeah. and research to look for the yeah. testing of that. But again, if we all turned off our periods for five years, we decrease our risk We'd by 50%. We'd lessen that risk. Yeah. Yeah, but we absolutely yeah, still yeah, need to yeah. fund research in that area. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm obviously a middle-aged woman, long out the other side of needing uh, birth control. But I'm fascinated when I was reading through your staff about the latest in birth control. Can you tell us what that looks like? Because there's amazing options. So if you go back to when I was that age, there was not a lot of options, not a lot of talk, not a lot of discussion. There was one or two pills to choose from. But now there's quite a lot of options for all sorts of different women and their bodies. And this is part of your work as well, Dr. Sophie. So what's the latest in birth control? Yes. So um, what I found really fascinating and disappointing is that I always think of Canada as like the amazing example of great healthcare and whatnot and progressive yes. values. However, they yeah. were missing one of one entire method of birth control, which is the implant. Yeah. So I hope that Australia yes. has the implant. I hope that Australia has the we vaginal do. ring. I think so. 
Okay, great. And yes. what I heard also is just about horrible access in Singapore, that if you want birth control, you have to go every single month to see the doctor and you have to wait two hours oh. to see the doctor and you can beg the doctor to give you a couple months or a year, which we do in the United States, not in Singapore. Yes. So I was horrified and we need to help them. But um, I want everybody yes. to know all the methods. So we start from the top and we work our way down. As physicians, we used to start at the bottom and work our way up and people will fall asleep yeah. and you get to the top. <laughs> now our new paradigm is start with the best and work our way down. And as I've, I, and as yeah. I've said, as the only doctor-led company in birth control delivery yes. in the United States, we will always tell you what's best for your health, even if I can't yeah. profit off of it because I will make money yeah. but I don't have yeah, to yeah. Do it by withholding information or selling you snacks. Absolutely. So start at the top. The top is the IUD and the implant. They actually beat mm -hmm. female tubal ligation, which blows my mind because tubal ligation, for those who don't know out there, is not only do you snip the tubes of the woman on both sides, yes. but you actually take out an inch and then you burn it, burn it, burn it, burn it. And somehow, you know, one and in a hundred thousand still can get pregnant, but the IUD I know, is isn't hormone- that it's crazy. Your body wants to get pregnant that yes. badly. Yes. The IUD <laughs> and the implant, I use the hormone and the implant beat tubal ligation. So then comes tubal ligation wow. and then comes the copper IUD. Um, one caveat uh -huh. is if we vasectomy, that beats everything. So vasectomy is yes. the most effective, <laughs> but if you can't go there, that's fine. Um, yeah. And then yeah. IUD um, yeah. and then comes the shot not a fan of the shot so much because it gives you the munchies and if you're skinny it's not good for your bone density so if you're heavy you gain weight if yeah. you're skinny your bone's not good but if mm. it's better than being pregnant a fetus is going to yeah. eat far more of your bone density than the shot will right. <laughs> and then comes the ring the patch the pill However, wow. I wanted to tell you that the latest birth control is not necessarily yes. the greatest because there is now a new pill, yeah. a new patch, and a ring. And I need to tell you yes. the negatives of the new pill, the patch, the ring. Yeah. The new Please. pill is a progesterone only pill. And so people oh. are excited because there's no estrogen, but we've always had a progesterone only pill. And the negative of the yeah. progesterone only pill is if you're late by three hours, then you're going to need some emergency mm -hmm. contraception or you're going to have to abstain from yes. sex. The good of this new pill yes. is it's more flexible. You could be late up to a 24 hours. So that's great. But the oh, yeah. is the cost. So it's brand. Uh -huh. And it's like 150 US dollars versus 15 per month? dollars per month. Whoa. Yeah. So you could do, you know, 10 months worth for one month. Yes, for the price of one month. Exactly. Yeah. And then the other thing yeah. is it's drospirinone, which is one of the progesterones that I like. But you have yeah. to be able to drink eight glasses of water a day because it might have a theoretical diuretic effect. And for me, I work with a lot of teenagers oh. and adults and they don't drink water because they don't yeah. want to pee at school or college or work. <laughs> and then they get a headache yeah. because they did it. Yeah. So um, I know a lot of people in Asia can just walk in and get a drug. Be aware of drospirinone because mm -hmm. I had a patient that I met that came from Asia and was like, I got these headaches after I started the pill. And I was like, what's the progesterone? And do you drink eight glasses of water? So watch out for drospirinone. Yeah. If you're on drospirinone, please drink eight glasses of water a day. And if you can't, the then water. switch off. And then there's a new yeah. pill, there's yeah, a new yeah. patch. The new patch, just as physicians in general, were wary of the patch because although it says mm -hmm. it's 35 micrograms for the old patch and there's a new patch with yeah. 30 micrograms, when we look at how much estrogen is in your blood, because it's not going through your mouth, mm -hmm. it's not going through your liver, it's going into through your skin, it's actually the equivalent yeah. of like a 50 microgram birth control pill. And just as a reference for all your listeners, most birth control pills are 30, 35 micrograms. So 50 micrograms yeah. is, is, you know, 66% more drug than you necessarily yeah. need. Mm -hmm. And the new one is five micrograms yeah. less, but still it's probably gonna be, you know, 30% more, you know, some number in between, yeah. you get the idea. Yeah. So that, but again, better the patch and not pregnant. 
them pregnant, but know that. And then also, cause it's brand again, crazy expensive. Mm-hmm. Like all the patches right now, yeah. even the generic is 120 a month. So very expensive compared Gosh. to, price, but better than pregnant. And if you're in the United yes. States, thank you, former President Obama and current President Biden for passing the Affordable Care Act, which any FDA yes. approved method of birth control is available in the United States. No copay, no deductible. So if you have insurance, free, unless your employer is religious. Oh, wow. So I don't know how much it costs in Australia if you guys cover it or there's copays that women we- have. Our, our system's a little bit different and it's changed a lot since I investigated that sort of stuff. But um, we, my understanding is that it's um, a minimal um, payment based on whichever pill that is prescribed. Um, that gives women an amazing amount of options and control over their rep- reproductive health, doesn't it? That's changed a lot in the the years since I had to um, deal with any of that. I want to ask um, about your decision to form a company that is female founded and female led because I love it. But what was behind Pandia and, and doing that? Because I absolutely believe that women should be talking to women about women's health because there's an understanding as, as, as wonderful as our male colleagues and experts are, they can never understand what it's like to live in a woman's body and experience a period or um, pregnancy, et cetera. You, you just can't understand and that's not a derogatory or a or or anything bad you just can't understand because you don't live in the body of a woman so how powerful was that decision to form a company that's female-led female-owned and female-directed one I'm so proud that we are the that we did it And that's why I did it, is I saw these other companies and how could the birth control companies be run by men who have never bled, who have never feared, holy, I missed my period, am I pregnant? Yes. The fear of pregnancy is just like, ah, right? It's it's not great, no. And I actually coined the term that no one has ever coined in medicine, but once you hear it, it rings so true. Hashtag pill Mm -hmm. anxiety. So for anyone who's never taken the birth control pill, imagine four rows of seven pills. And as you get closer to that last pill, if you don't get to the pharmacy, you could be pregnant or you could be bleeding or you'd have to abstain from sex or really talk to your partner about using the condom. So many, or you risk pregnancy, you know, which is just, yes. as I mentioned, a huge life changer when you don't want to be pregnant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I, I said it had to be women founded, women led, had to be led by a woman. It was just wrong and no offense to anyone yeah. without a uterus. But if you never had to risk being pregnant, be have yes. run out of your birth control pills, you just really don't understand. And the idea of Pandia Health no is we're building the online health brand women trust. And so yes, if they can't relate, how good is the product going to be? You just don't understand. And as I like to say, I yeah. live, breathe, eat, and prescribe birth control. And I'm doing this one yes. for myself and two for my daughters, yeah. but three for anybody with a uterus, my future granddaughters and anybody else out yeah. there. I want yeah. them to have a company that has your best interest at heart and not just trying to make money off of people, but also I can come up with products all the time. Like one of our patient patient care advisors was like, oh, I got a yeast infection. I was like, oh, you're so lucky you know me because I can just write you a prescription. You take a pill, done. Whereas all the other women have to go to the pharmacy, get a cream, stick it up their vagina twice a day for a week and then ooze the cream out when you could just take a pill. So I just came up with another product like that because she told me this. And then menopause, all my friends are like, menopause, 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 menopause. And I'm like, okay, okay. We need (laughs) evidence-based, doctor-directed 
treatment as opposed yes. to something that hasn't been proven, no science and in the United States, no FDA testing of that supplement. All supplements are not tested. Wow. So they've shown specifically mm. in a bottle of St. John's wort and it says a hundred milligrams yes. could have zero yes. milligrams or could have a thousand mm. milligrams in the same bottle because it's not tested, oh it's goodness. not regulated. So you do need to find a manufacturer you trust, et cetera, et cetera. But for me, yeah, we're gonna yeah. focus on you FDA approved, you know, evidence-based treatment for menopause. And certainly we can refer you to mm -hmm. other people, et cetera, but we will also be adding on nutritionists, support groups, et cetera. But that's the yeah. difference of a women-founded, women-led company is your interest at heart because it affects me, my children, my future, and as yes. a doctor, I care. Yeah, absolutely. And we probably should be investing in um, things that help women lead better lives because we're 50% of the, well, I think 51% of the population. And we deserve that, don't we, Dr. Sophia? Absolutely. I hope that, you know, your listeners will check out SheEO, which is an amazing nonprofit. Yes where you invest $1,100 once a year and it's pooled with 499 other people. And then they choose five startups to invest in. And, and we mm -hmm. were luckily chosen as one of those um, five for the United States and they do it per country. So there's Australia, there's um, the they UK, do. there's yes, Canada. In it's a great great organization it CEO. is australia's in that process at the moment and um i apply as a venture each year just because you get to hang out with such amazing women and the joy and education and the community that is in and around shio is quite spectacular um, so both Sophia and I are involved in SHEO and part of the reason why um, Dr. Sophie is on the show today is because I like to have as many SHEO-led uh, female businesses on the program as possible because they're doing such amazing things, uh, uh, innovative things and solving problems things and uh, that's part of the ethos behind CEO is that they're women working on the world's to-do list and women's reproductive health would have to be right up there as the things that we need to improve for women now and going forward, particularly for our daughters and granddaughters. Um, Dr. Sophie, the way in which you manage birth, birth control from Pandia is quite revolutionary and I've not heard of it in any other country. Can you tell our listeners about that? Because we have a special offer for women listening today. Yes. So we can deliver to all 50 states in the United States and we can write the prescription in 13 states. Um, which covers about 50% mm -hmm. of the population. We also mm -hmm. uh, advocate for birth control tourism. So if you're not in one of the 13 states, if you're bordering one of the yes, states, yes. just hop over the border. Yes. Or if you happen to be in and Vegas, San Francisco, LA, Miami, or Austin, mm -hmm. you can get it while you're there. As long as you fill out the questionnaire, 20 questions, same questions I'd asked mm -hmm. when you came into my office, um, do you have breast cancer? What medication are you on? What do you want? What side effects have you had? Do you smoke? How old yes. are you? Et cetera, et cetera. We do need a self-reported blood pressure within the past 365 days. So you can go to a grocery mm -hmm. store, pharmacy, call your doctor and say, Hey, what was my blood pressure last time I was there? Or I mm -hmm. like the option fire station in the United States, very good looking men, if you're into men, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you can go up and say, they're all EMTs oftentimes. Which would be through the pressure. roof. <laughs> yeah, but you do need to sit calmly for five minutes and then take your blood pressure. Otherwise, the blood pressure will be exactly through the roof. And the 13 <laughs> states are Arizona, California, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, um, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, and Wyoming. So if you're not in one of those yes. states, get to one of the states, fill out our questionnaire pay our doctors $20 once a year to use our expert birth control doctors. Mm -hmm. We're proud that on our website, we list the first and last name of every doctor. We put their picture, yes. we put their education. Many of them are academic, affiliated yeah. with Stanford, University of Arizona, mm -hmm. et cetera, and why they're passionate 
to make women's lives better and Google our yeah. piece, um, good versus bad telemedicine. Cause I'm giving mm. you one of the tenets of picking good telemedicine versus just yes. you need to know where you're getting your healthcare, healthcare, healthcare is That's not amazing. like Amazon healthcare is not like, you know, Etsy or whatever. You need to know who the doctors are. And if they don't list the doctors, mm maybe a questionable kind of company yeah. and our offer to your listeners yeah. in the United States, in those 13 States, if you need the telemedicine, enter Tony T O N I, and we'll give you $5 mm -hmm. off the $20. So that's a 25% yes. savings um, yes. and tell a friend. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Dr. Sophie, I was going to ask in Australia, you can type in a doctor's uh, provider number and see that they're licensed and registered. Is it the similar format in the US as well, where you can actually check and see that the doctor that you're talking to is registered and that registration comes with a whole heap of provisos. They had to have they had to they have to have done a certain number of hours of continuing education a certain number of hours of continuing practice so you know if you look and you see that number and and it's okay that you're getting a, a good doctor and again i would encourage women to talk to women doctors particularly ones like dr sophia who have a, a women a woman's perspective in the foremost front of their mind and um, I know that those people that go to your clinics will get that wonderful uh, care and uh, expertise from your doctors, won't they? Yes, we are very proud to have expert doctors who are passionate and we have protocols that we follow to make sure that yeah. we've caught people on birth control pills that have estrogen that should not mm -hmm. have been on it. So if you're 35 and a smoker, yeah the risk from blood clots is greater than the benefit of preventing unplanned pregnancy. And if you have migraines with aura, if you just have migraines, totally fine. But if you have migraines with neurological yes. symptoms or flashing lights mm -hmm. or part of your body goes numb, you should not be on an estrogen containing birth control pill. Yeah. So we've caught a couple of those because we have a protocol. And then the other thing mm -hmm. is because I believe we're the only academic physician um, CEO. Yeah. And so I love looking yeah. at the latest and the greatest in science and applying it. And we're noticing that there's ethnic differences in response to birth control. Yeah. And so we forget that most of medicine is based on a seven kilo Caucasian male, but yep. similar probably for a Caucasian female. Yes. And that those of us that don't yeah. fit that category that, that what works that for test. that person doesn't work for us. And so we found mm -hmm. that this progesterone works much better. Asians, Blacks, Latinos, and anybody who doesn't want to bleed every single month. And this one is good yeah. if you're a Caucasian female that wants to bleed every month. And so we're taking what we're yeah. learning and making women have fewer side effects. If you're new and you tell us do yes. whatever you want, then we will put you on the one that we feel will have fewer side effects. If you come in yeah, on a medication yeah. you like, we'll leave you. We won't change it. But if you don't like it, please yes. tell us and we'll put you on the one yeah. that will be best for your yeah. health. And we ask that people self-report their ethnicity. We're using that as a proxy yes. for genetics to correlate which one mm. will have the least amount of side effects. So when you join Pandia Health, you're adding to the body of data. We're not, you know, it's all anonymized, yes. et cetera, but to improve yes. women's lives. And we will do the same with acne and we will do the same with menopause. Yeah, like that's just a fantastic, that data will then drive wonderful decisions for women that are, it, it's informed by science and statistics, which yes. makes it so much better. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that you guys lead the way in being able to provide uh, 12 months worth of birth control in one go. Yes. Um, I know that that doesn't happen in Australia, but what an amazing idea. One doctor's visit and 12 months, like how phenomenal. Exactly. So there are 20 states in the United States that says if your doctor yeah. writes one year supply. So even if you don't use Pandia Health and you're in the United States, mm -hmm. educate your doctor that and I only learned yeah. this when I opened this company as a physician. I never learned this, but because I yeah. started a pharmacy and I was trying to get women as yeah. much birth control as possible 
20 states in the mm -hmm. United States have a law that says if a physician writes a prescription for a year supply, your insurance has to cover it. As to how many insurances are following that law, I would say very few. And so Pandia Health, mm -hmm. you know, set it and forget it. Let you us know. worry so you don't have to. That way we send you as mm -hmm. much as your insurance will allow at a time. It could be one, three, or a year supply. There are some good insurances out yeah. there, but I'd say the majority are not following the law. But educate your doctor, right? 13 packs if you're not skipping your periods, 17 packs mm -hmm. if you're skipping your periods and educate the physician that a pharmacy can always constrict the prescription, but they cannot expand it. And so as a doctor, I used to write, wow. dispense one pack, dispense uh, one pack, refill times 11. And I'd be like, I gave you a year supply. What are you complaining yes. about? But I actually chained yeah. that patient to the pharmacy every single month because the pharmacy doesn't know, you know, based on your oh. order, that there isn't a reason yes. that you want this patient to come back every month. And instead, most of us are like, yeah, it's totally fine. But they Just can give go them in years. Yeah, get a year supply. And the in research has shown, yeah, in California, if you give a first timer, because in the old days, we'd be like, we give you one pack and then you would come back and have to check your and blood pressure, it. blah, 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 yes. blah. And they yes. showed that if that first timer, we gave her 13 mm -hmm. packs and then we gave another yes. friend of hers one pack and another friend of hers six packs. Who do you think is most likely mm -hmm. to still be on her birth control pill at 15 months? the one that you gave a year supply the one that had the because yeah. whatever difficulty yeah. she had to get to your clinic she couldn't go back for that follow up and then she fell off and never got any more birth control and yes. again it's just and $15 sad. a month for a pack of pills and i always say yes. it's fiscally smart and morally right to cover birth control and it's just math absolutely because so much yeah. cheaper to pay yeah. for the birth control pill than to pay for an abortion, $800, a vaginal delivery, $10,000, a C-section, $40,000, yeah. than to pay for birth control. Oh, my goodness. And then there's the cost of raising a child from now until they're 18, at the very least. Yeah, um, until they die. That's a lot of <laughs> investment. <Yes. laughs> Well, that's true too. They yes. never leave home or they never, your never cease until to you need die. you. Until I die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Dr. Sophie, just quickly, um, the, if you are talking to 15-year-olds the majority of the time about birth control, are there outliers? Are, are you talking to younger girls? Is there a trend in younger um uh, women coming into uh, their period at a younger age? So definitely there has been a trend towards periods coming earlier. It used to be 12 and a half. Yeah. Now it's about 12 years, yeah. a huge relation to obesity. And what it is, okay. is that when you hit 22% body fat, then your body's like, ah, yes. I have enough nutrition. I can make eggs and babies and linings and stuff like that. And our purpose as animals is to um, reproduce. So um, yeah. as 60% of the population is now becoming obese and overweight and a similar trickling Please. down to the mm -hmm. children, that's why. Yeah. And it's the estrogen yeah. that happens that allows, yes. you know, these things to happen, but it's the nutrition and so, you know, we just need to make sure that everybody's eating healthy, that everybody, you know, but yes. we're seeing definitely periods coming earlier. And so with the periods optional, we can actually think of birth control no longer as birth control, but as hormonal yes, treatment but, to control your menstruation. Yeah. And we can do that yeah. within two, we would start that at the earliest two years after your first period. So it's starting 14, okay. 14 and a half, you can start talking to yeah. anybody with a uterus. Let's talk about making periods optional. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to ask um, from, from the start, how long in your professional opinion, should they wait until they actually start? Um, I wish that I'd had those options when I was that age, making them optional, because that would have been fantastic. Um, I don't know how we got through option. high school, college, higher I education know. with random blood one week out of four. And those without uteruses oh, just God. don't understand. I think we need to have menstruation yeah. month where we're any allies yeah. wears a little sticker on them. And then we have little red water balloons that we throw at them. Yeah. 
you know, for seven days in a row. So they understand how random the period is. And you're in the middle of a test, yes. in the middle of a radio interview, yes. and all of a sudden, yes. blood. And yes. Yes. I, and I can still remember that feeling. And it's, it, it really is anxiety provoking for a teenager. Yes. Um, you know, even as a grown woman, it can still be very anxiety provoking. But as a teenager, Oh, you know, in school, the embarrassment, you already have the hormones going up and down, the acne, the self-consciousness. Yeah. Can everybody yeah. hear? Can everybody smell yeah. like the chafing of the pad between your legs? Yes. You know, the having yes. to change clothes, having to carry a sweatshirt so you could tie it around your abdomen, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much. Yeah, I know. It's not pleasant. And I'm glad that we're able to have these conversations more openly today. And that if there's mums and women listening, that they will openly talk about these things with their daughters and know that they have these options to control their lives or bring a bit more balance into their lives that you don't have to live with these yucky situation. And for me, Dr. Sophia, Um, mine, that whole period of my life started and I immediately ended, uh, immediately had uh, polycystic ovaries. So I was getting uh, ovarian cysts all the time. And let me just tell you about the doubling over pain that ensures with that situation. So had I been able to have access to better uh, birth control, some of those things would have been eliminated. You know, you don't have to, just because mum and grandma or auntie all put up with pain and heavy bleeding and all the rest of it, doesn't mean that we need to today, does it? Exactly. And, and that's the 25, you know, the women that are missing school and work, please yes. see a medical provider. Just because it runs in the family doesn't mean it has to be. And the example I give for you is that, you know, everything natural is not necessarily the best thing. I believe in drugs and I believe in technology. And if I left things yes. natural, I would be blind as a bat and useless at the bat, useless to this world because my family runs blind and luckily I got LASIK and now I have beautiful 2020 vision, but otherwise I'd be minus oh. 10 with glasses. And if I didn't use the glasses, I couldn't see, yes. I couldn't learn, I couldn't contribute, but also I have horrible yes. allergies and yes. I would, if I don't take my allergy meds, yes. I would also be sniffling and can't breathe and all sorts of yes. nasty. So Please take yes. advantage of the technology of so modern health and yes, science. productive and contribute and not bleed yeah. and not have anemia. And, you know, another way I like to, I like to put things graphically envision your arm, yes. take a knife and slice it and bleed one week out of yes. four. If men had to go yes. through that, this wouldn't be an issue. Yes. All birth control would be covered simply for that bleeding agreed. situation. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Dr. Sophia, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Just a quick reminder to our listeners and all the women out there, don't forget to jump on Pandia Health um, and have a look at their website. There's a special offer there you'll find in the links to the show notes today, also on radiotony.com. But if you go on to pandiahealth.com, you can find out about all the programs that Dr. Sophia runs. Um, It's been an absolute delight and pleasure talking to you today thank you for being such a wonderful guest and talking so openly about these things that we still have to talk to and I'm hoping by the time I have granddaughters that we won't have to talk about these things that everyone will know that they can get 12 months worth of supply of birth controls uh, birth control pills that they don't have to suffer in silence one week out of four and that there are amazing female-led uh, empowering wonderful doctors to help you with your journey in female reproductive health thank you dr sophia so much for coming on radio tony everyday business today um, I wish you all the success in the world with all the wonderful things that you're doing. Um, and thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. It's been great talking about such important issues. And please share pandiahealth.com forward slash periods optional with anybody with a uterus. Sit down, mom and daughter, mm-hmm. dad and daughter. Yes. Yes. For those dads of daughters out there as well. 
Okay, my well, wonderful audience, that is your lot for this week. Please thank Dr. Sophia Yen from Pandia Health, and I will be back next week with another amazing guest. Thank you, Dr. Sophia. And that's our lot for this week. Bye for now.